Hello, good morning and welcome to this live event. It's called Need an Intellectual Property Strategy or IP Pre-Diagnostic Scan and 75% off with the SME Fund. Well, you will discover, we'll explain to you step by step this morning why it is so important to have an IP strategy for your business and what the intellectual property pre-diagnostic service can do and also how you can benefit from this. So how much refund you can request, um, this is also included and what are the steps to take and of course at the end of this webinar we are very happy to take your questions and um, to reply to everything you want to know. So it's my pleasure to be connected today from the European Union Intellectual Property Office, the EUIPO, here in Alicante, for this third webinar on the Ideas Powered for Business SME Fund. My name is Iris de Groot. I work at the Customer Department at EUIPO. And I'm very honored to be your moderator today and very happy to introduce you to our expert speakers today. There's Mrs. Maria Del Mar Badares from the EUIPO Observatory and Mr. Hans Helsloot from the Netherlands Patent Office. Quickly introducing to our speakers, Maria Del Mar Badares, she works in the Observatory of the EUIPO. She's an IP lawyer who has been worked in the EUIPO for the last nine years. She has been involved in a variety of projects within the office and she was involved in international cooperation projects, developing common practices with IP offices across uh, the EU. Maria is also experienced in designing and delivering online and face-to-face -face IP training and has been involved in training targeted at experts providing recommendations for small and medium enterprises. Within the observatory, Marina has been involved in the production of the SME scoreboard and also in anti-counterfeiting projects, such as the anti-counterfeiting technology guide, a, doc a document to help businesses understand which technologies can help them to protect their, business, their, their products against counterfeiting. Good morning, Maria. Good morning, Iris. Good morning, Hans. Good morning, Eric. Hans, quickly also to introduce you. So, Mr. Hans Helslot is an industrial design engineer and a senior advisor at the Netherlands Patent Office, and he supports SMEs with relevant information on IP. He is also an expert in IP information for SMEs since almost 20 years. He is a guest lecturer for university students about IP. And before joining the Netherlands Patent Office, he worked in the private sector in product development and product design. From there, it was a natural and logical way for him to dig into the IP world and also to practice IP pre-diagnostics for SMEs since a couple of years for the Netherlands Patent Office. Before we start now with the actual presentation, I would like to invite you all to watch together this very short one minute video. Please go ahead. This is an awareness test. How many passes does the team in white make? Just a sec, we come. The answer is 13. But, did you spare? No! I hope that most of you will discover something new. We come up here. And just to give a little bit of a... A spice. So this video is called the monkey business illusion. The gorilla, which was on the screen for nearly nine seconds, nearly half of the people 
didn't see it in the video. Daniel Simons, who invented this experiment in 2010, says it's an example of inattentional blindness. Because we have the illusion that what we are seeing is the complete picture, but in fact, it shows how blind we can be to what we are not paying attention to. So it's a failure to see something obvious when focusing attention on something else. Translated to our context today, we can assume that if SMEs are not aware of the benefits of protecting their IP assets, they will just not look for it. So did you know that only 9% of the SMEs in Europe protect their businesses with an IP right? Studies showed, among other reasons, that this is because they lack awareness. So not knowing how important it can be to a business to have an IP protection that helps you to grow to put value on, to be competitive. So it's just an example of inattentional blindness or how blind we can be to what we are not paying attention to. So in today's webinar, we want to bring your attention to how important an IP right can be to a business. So Maria, why should SMEs care about an IP strategy? And how can they get financial support from the 20 million fund for SMEs? By the way, for more details, um, access the SME Fund webpage and watch, record, and watch the recorded webinar from the 9th of March. And both links are here on this slide that you can download uh, if you want. So Maria, please tell us, what is IP Scan and what are the main benefits for small and medium businesses? Thank you, Liz, and good morning, everybody. Um, yes, so... Um, before entering into detail about what the IP scan is, I will just recap very shortly on the SME fund because um, there are right now some very interesting opportunities for small businesses to obtain some financial support. Um, it, is the, it is called the SME fund. It is an action of the European Commission implemented by the EU IPO and in close collaboration with the national offices. Um, or national intellectual property offices and regional IP offices of the European Union, to whom, of course, we extend our thanks. Um, the fund is, is 20 million euros in grants that will be allocated to small businesses um, in these times of economic difficulty. Um, in the case of, of the webinar of today, the IP scan, um, the SME fund provides the opportunity to get a 75 percent refund so if uh, if the service costs a thousand you would get 750 euros back um, to apply for it you have to go to the eu ipo website it's on the front page in a section called the sme fund and um, just just for completeness very quickly to mention that you can also get back 50 percent of a basic application fee for a trademark or a design in the EU or national or regional trademarks or designs, so 50%. But today we will focus, as I said before, on the IP scan. Yes, so um, when, when we think about an IP scan, the, the first question you would be asking yourself is, is why? Why do I want an IP scan? What's, what's in this for me? And First and foremost, an IP scan is interesting because it is tailored. It is something very much made for the business. Um, it is aimed at the business needs and, it is, and its aim is to make any company grow and make profit. So business, if you're in business, of course, chances are very high. Chances are that you are innovating. You have created or developed something that new or faster or better for the environment or more efficient. So you might have a, a patent there, or you might, have, you might be doing something in a way which is more creative, or you might have developed something that is more beautiful. Um, so you might have a copyright or a design or both, um, or perhaps the way you run your business is so unique and, and better or different. And, and there are some ways to protect this because um, 
you have perhaps important information which gives you the cutting edge in the business information that you should protect you should protect internally and you should protect from others and here we enter into the the ground of possible trade secrets um and of course when you're doing business and you have developed a group of clients, you want them to recognize that you are the source of these goods or of these services, this goodwill. Um, and of course, in this, in this case, you would want your name protected. This is closely linked to a trademark or even to a domain name. So you want, you want your customers to remember your name. So, all of these things um, sometimes you take for granted but actually in an ip scan the idea is to investigate into all of these assets that you have in your company and find out the best way to maximize them for your business once you have a clearer picture and awareness like we saw in the beginning you can plan your future better or even you can let others participate in your plans and profit from your ideas um, in a safe way, if you have the right contracts in place. So all of these intangible assets, you can exploit them to the full potential. You can protect yourself and you can even grow all the time. These, these intellectual property rights, when, man, were, when managed correctly, are actually an investment and they should be seen as an investment and not as, a, as, as, a, as an expense or a waste of time or a waste of money. Um, there is actually evidence that a, a good, a well-used trademark portfolio um, will will generate a higher revenue. So, in the in the recent EU IPO EPO IP contribution study, one can see that for small businesses with intellectual property portfolios that are well managed, they these appear to generate up to sixty eight percent higher revenues per employee than those without an IP portfolio. So, um, so what is this IP scan then? The way I see it, it's like a journey. It's a journey where the, the business sits together with an expert like Hans, who will speak to you later. And they, the expert will take time to ask you questions, to understand your business. Um, they will do some research. Uh, they will look into your business model into your plans for the future, your competitors, the way you are working today. Um, see it as a way to find the key to open your box of treasures, which are these intangible assets. Um, you will receive at the end a set of concrete recommendations, which are, like I said in the beginning, tailored especially for you, for your business. They will point you in the right direction and increase your awareness and how to protect them best so that they can work for you, for your business. Next slide, please. So who can apply for, the, for this? The SME fund, uh, the way it works is that any small or medium-sized enterprise established in the European Union is eligible to apply for a grant in the form of an IP voucher. Now, remember the voucher, you can get it either for the IP scan or for filing the application. Um, for uh, something that is very important that took place recently is that uh, starting in March, uh, a representative of a company may also apply for the SME fund on behalf of their clients. And of course, businesses can apply directly as well. Uh, next slide, please. So where can you get these IP scan services? Where are they available? They are available in the national offices of those uh, participating offices of the program, of the IP scan program. It is available in those eight uh, countries that you can see right there. However, uh, more are coming on board later in the year so um, please be attentive to the list of uh, participating offices published on the SME web uh, on the SME fund in the EU IPO website. So before applying, you might want to check for it again, as more are coming in the future. However, if your company 
is not in this list of countries, please still stay watching because the service is also offered um, outside of the SME fund in some uh, offices. You, you should check with your national intellectual property offices for the conditions for applying. And also something that is very important, when can I apply or when can, can, can you apply? There are five windows open in this year, in 2021. We are now in the second window, the second window of March, which ends at the end of this month. This means that you can apply right now. Uh, last moment to apply in the year 2021 is the end of September. You are invited to apply during all of the open windows. So as you can see there on the slide, there are several open windows. And when the window is open, it's the moment to apply. Subsequent windows will open in May, in July and in September. And you can only apply for the grant when there is an open window. Next slide, please. Good, so this is the process. How does it work? Very quickly, uh, the SME applies for the grant and indicates that the, ser the services that he wants, so either IP scan or um, application fees or both, then uh, the company will get a grant decision uh, this should come more or less the month after you apply. Um, then you, you have to wait to obtain the grant decision. And once you obtain it, you, um, the company has 30 days. Sorry, it's very sunny. The company has 30 days to apply for the services as indicated in the grant application. After you apply and you pay for the services, then you can apply for a reimbursement using the proof of payment. For the IP scan, you will need an invoice from the national office, and then um, you apply, you submit the, the, the proof of payment and you would get the reimbursement. But I want to stop talking about administrative procedure right now, because the most important thing is the IP scan for administrative things. Don't forget, you can always consult our website, but for understanding an IP scan, we have uh, today our uh, guest speaker Hans. <laughs> Thank you very much, Maria. In essence, we take from your presentation that IP scan is all about getting personalized information on how intangible assets such as your trademarks, designs, or trade secrets can help your business grow. Hans, you have such a long experience in conducting interviews with SMEs on how they can best benefit from IP rights. So doing this since so many years, you must be passionate about diagnosticating the right IP strategy for SMEs. Can you maybe please tell us why this is so important for SMEs and what SMEs ask you when they come to see you for information and recommendations on how to design their IP strategy? Thank you. Uh, thank you, Iris, and thank you for the audience. To watch this. Um, well, the companies, many companies innovate all the time. They develop new technology, new design, new names, logos, slogans. They renew the website, brochures, movies, photos, and they have a lot of secret business information like client lists, or production methods, or recipes. Um, that all together is called intellectual property, IP. And there are many laws you can use to protect that IP. Um, because you want to prevent others to copy your innovation. And you could use, for technology, you could use patents, uh, for example, or trade secrets. For a new design, you could use design right to protect the new outer appearance. You could also use copyright for design or manuals or videos or websites. And of course, there is the new name or the new logo that you could protect with trademarks, uh, the company name with trade names, and of course, your website, the domain. Um, and apart from that, you could also protect your IP with contracts like non-disclosure agreements, or collaboration agreements, or license agreements. 
Um, now, what is the IP scan? Um, it's a first step to an IP strategy. We've just seen there are so many lo uh, laws you can use, but which laws are the best to use in your business? So what we do in the IP scan is first we make an analysis of the IP environment of your business. SME maybe is not clear for you, small and medium entity. Um, we relate your IP to your business strategy. And then we focus on those IP aspects which are most important for you. So we're not promoting that you use all the rights, but we are promoting that you use those that are most important for your business. So we look at a business strategy and IP strategy, and those things run parallel to each other. On top, you see the business strategy. Very short, you, can, you could say the business strategy is how do you get from your actual business to a desired business in a number of years. To have that desired business in a number of years, you have some IP uh, required to, uh, to defend that. But probably you don't have that IP yet. So we look at the actual IP of your company, and we also look at the actual IP of other companies. And then we, we recommend ways how you could get to the IP required for your desired business. And that is called the IP strategy. Next slide, please. What the IP scan is not, it's not the filing of IP rights. It's not that we file a patent application or a trademark for you. It's not an analysis of the risk that you are infringing on patents or other IP rights from others. It's not the assistance with conducting IP litigation, going to court or such a thing, and it's not the writing of a collaboration contract or non disclosure. It is a focus on your IP strategy and your business strategy. Now, going through a consultation, of course, we start with the planning, then we do a desk research. We take a look at your website what products do you make, what names do you use. And then we go to a database like TMView to see if the names that you are using on your website are protected with the fake. Um, often we see that companies forget to protect their names as a fake. Um, we also go to Espasnet to see what patents you have. And for each IP right, we do this similar test research. After that, we come to your business and uh, have an interview with the CEO and often also the CTO if there is new technology. This is quite an elaborate interview. And then we, uh, with that information, we write a short report uh, how we think that you could make better use of the IP system to uh, support your business strategy. We send that report to you, and then we make another appointment to discuss the report and to explain anything that you might, uh, that might not be clear to you or uh, uh, answer further questions. The report um, is a first step to an IP So it's a short analysis of your IP environment. It relates IP to your business strategy and focuses on the most important IP. I want to give you an example of a specific company. Next slide, please. Um, this is a company uh, we did 
can IP stand for. They develop games and deliver the games and they project. The games are projected on a surface like a table. And there is also a camera in the project that can monitor what the people uh, are doing. So the game reacts on the movement of the people. So what does this company do? The characteristics of the company, there is hardware, they project, not manufactured by the company itself, it's licensed. They have software, games, which are co-developed with university and also with clients. They, of course, have a name for the game, but it's very descriptive and it's the Dutch. And um, they collaborate a lot with research at university. Um, next slide, please. The business goal. The most important business goal is international expansion. They are quite successful in the Netherlands and they want to grow in other countries. So their IP goals are to expand IP protection to other countries and reduce IP risk, like the risk of infringing on a patent or any other IP right of someone else. Um, we did a register check. And what uh, we found out is that there were on the projector, there was only one national patent, and it was owned by the supplier, so not by the game. We also found out that this company had a Benelux figurative trademark. They couldn't get a word because it was too descriptive. And it was the Dutch name, which is not very well understood in other countries. So we recommended you reconsider that brand. Think of a new name that works in other countries as well, and that is protectable as a trade. We also recommend it to consider a redesign of the project so that it could be protected. And we also recommend it to secure ownership of the games with contract, copyright, and proof because the games are co-developed. Co At that moment, there were no good contracts about who owns what. And that is not very handy if you want to expand abroad. We also recommended to investigate patentability and infringement risk. Next slide, please. Um, <clears throat> Furthermore, we recommend it to consider to renegotiate the license contract with the supplier in order to adapt their international expansion. The license agreement was only uh, referring to the Netherlands, but not to other countries. So they had to rene renegotiate. Um, we recommend it them to train their employees in handling confidential information. Um, they were not very much aware of what they could share and what they should keep secret, what was uh, very uh, important um, for the business itself um, and giving them a, a competitive advantage um, and what they could share easy. We also recommended to review the contract with the university and make one person responsible for IP. At that moment, they had um, one person responsible for the technical act and another person responsible for trade. And there was no coordination between that. And then, of course, it, it uh, is very difficult to make all the IPs the board of it. Um, so the follow-up, what did they do after our recommendation? They 
did a rebranding and filed a trade. They are busy at this moment with a redesign and with a patent application. Their contracts were reviewed, employees trained, and they made one person responsible for it. Um, I also want to share with you the recommendation that we gave most frequently to not specifically to this essay, but to all in all the IP standards. The most frequent recommendation was develop and implement an IP strategy. Some companies have an IP strategy, but they don't implement it. Um, another recommendation integrate IP database research in your innovation process. So often we see in novel research in patent applications that the invention is not new. Uh, so if you would use IP database research in your innovation process, if you would integrate, you would not reinvent the wheel again. Uh, you, you would use the knowledge of what others have already invented and published in their patent application. We also recommended to consider the expansion of trademark registration. Very often, our companies don't register their trademark or only in very limited uh, number of countries. And we recommended very often to train employees in handling confidential information. It is, uh, every company has confidential information, but so often the company doesn't know or the employees don't know how to handle it. Um, so far I wanted to, um, yeah, to, give my speech, uh, Iris, are there any questions? Yes, Hans, we have quite some questions. Um, there is a question from Finland, and uh, here our audience is asking, the next EUIP training for local experts will be until, will be in June, as far as they know possible. Is it possible to have it earlier, or watch the first recorded training to get permission to act as a local expert. That would help European startups to use this service, especially in new countries starting IP scan service. Maybe this is a question for Maria about the training. Yes, indeed. Um, there are plans to provide more trainings to the IP offices um, who would wish to participate. Um, I believe there is a possibility of a, of a training coming up uh, later on this year. The national offices will be made aware of the dates for the training, but there are there is at least one more training coming this year. Um, the exact dates, like I mentioned, will be informed to the national offices directly. Mm. Yeah, interesting. I think there was another question also which came in this question is from is from latvia and here the question is eu ipo provides 75 percent refund for ip scan the limit for latvia is 700 euro does this mean that the sme gets a maximum of 75 percent or 700 euro refund whichever is the biggest, namely, the office? sorry, sorry. yeah, it, sorry. It, it, I think I, it continues, namely, if the IP scan is simple and costs 400 euro, for example, the SME can get a 300 euro grant, but if the IP scan costs 2000 euro, the SME can get a 700 euro refund. Is this right? Um, there is a fixed amount in euros for an IP scan in the participating countries. So in the case of Latvia, it's 700 and the refund is 75% of the 700. Okay. Okay, fine. Good. 
I see there are no more questions for the moment, but I would like just to, to get to some conclusions here because from Hans, for example, thank you very much, Hans. I liked very, very much the example, the concrete example of this game. And what I take from here is that we learned that registering an IP right enables you to make money with IP. And that IP is super broad. There are patents, there are trademarks, there are designs, there are trade secrets. We talked about licensing, contracts, copyright, and so on and so on. And I heard also that IP scan is what this is not. So it's not the filing, neither writing a contract, for example. But it is about desk research, for example, in TMView. And there I liked also the example that you took within, within Dutch term, which, of course, if you want to go in, turn, in internalization, this means that it's better to look for a name which can be um, pronounced and, and, and kept and so on in the world. So you're also interviewing the company about this and discussing, in fact, and the final analysis that you are giving out with a recommendation report, no, helps then the company to, to develop and implement their IP strategy and maybe also to consider then expansion, to go for international, for example, um, give rep recommendations to the internal stuff also. So I personally found it very interesting. I learned a lot. Thank you very much. And I see we have another question here for you. So it comes from Finland and there we are asked, can a local expert in country X offer the IP scan service for an SME in a country Y? So can uh, I understand if an expert can give um, the advice for uh, if he's coming from Finland and he wants to give an advice for an SME in country uh, in another country, Latvia, let's say. And then if uh, the last country, for example, is listed in the SME fund country. So let's say they're all in the list. OK, so the, the way it works is, uh, first of all, and the experts who can provide an IP pre-diagnostic service? That's, a, that's the first question. Mm -hmm. um, every office designates the experts. So it is the office, the national office's decision who can provide the services. So that's the first question. Um, the second question is where, and the where is um, the SME who is in a specific country can request for IP pre-diagnostic services in that country only. So a Spanish uh, company can get a, an IP pre-diagnostic in Spain from the person designated by the Spanish office to provide IP pre-diagnostics. Okay, good. Thank you, Maria. I have another question here from Karlsruhe from Germany. So here our audience is asking, will you have a transparent IP scan procedure to follow up on the stage of processing? The procedure is defined by every national office directly. So it, it is not the EU IPO. Um, the, every office follows a very, a very uh, pre-established and organized uh, procedure internally. Um, I mean, we saw in the case of Hans, the different steps that are followed up. Um, every office um, will, this is something that you can take up directly with your national office. But of course there is a procedure. I mean, it is a very organized, uh, mm -hmm. it is a very organized and, and very well-planned uh, service, no? With, with several steps that are, that are very clear in order to obtain the, the final recommendations. A set of pre-established steps um, are put in place. Thank you, Maria. I have another question here from Belgium. How long does it take to complete the IPPDA after receiving the EU IPU agreement? One month, two months? What is the maximum time limit? Yes, so uh, first the application, you, you apply. Um, the month afterwards, you will be receiving a, a decision. If the decision is positive, then there are 30 days to apply for the services. 
And then there is a certain amount of time, and, and I believe that is the most important question in this case, how, when will I have my final uh, decision? Um, as, as you have seen, there are uh, a certain amount of, of uh, steps to follow. And of course, each company is, is, is different. Some might be more complex than others. Um, there is, uh, like you have seen first, of course, uh, questions to answer, de desk research to take place, recommendations to consider, searches to make. Um, this varies de depending on the on the complexity of each company. Um, so it will take a minimum some weeks um, until you you reach the the final uh, uh, let's say set of recommendations that have to be uh, delivered to the expert. So. It is weeks, it might even be um, a couple of, of, of months if, if it becomes more complex. Mm. Uh, Hans, perhaps you from your experience could, could uh, add something. Yeah, um, well, on average, um, our desk research takes from two, three, four weeks. And then uh, we have the interview. After the interview, we do the report writing which we try to do within two weeks and often most of, most of the time we've managed to do that but then the SME needs some time to, to study the report and discuss it internally so the follow-up uh, meeting we have is after two three four weeks um, yeah so you're right in uh, in total often it's two months mm -hmm. Very interesting from the from the field work to know how how this is managed. I can see here's another question. It's uh, again from Latvia about IP scan documents. Whether an invoice of the expert conducting the IP scan service and the payment will be confirmative documents to request reimbursements. Confirmative documents, I understand here, will be the documents to hand in, no? to ask for the reimbursement. So the invoice, the expert is conducting, and the payment. Uh, yes, so the, the, the company will get a, a confirmation of payment from the office, and this has to be then submitted back to the EYPO. Um, also, if, if the representative is applying uh, for the IP scan on behalf of his uh, client, it will be the company that will receive the reimbursement into their uh, bank account. Good. Thank you, Maria. And now we have another question here from Poland. Can the expert appointed by the national office be a private law firm or attorney, or does it have to be a person working in the national office? Who is providing the IP pre-diagnostic services? Is that the question? No. Can the expert appointed by the national office, can this be, for example, a private law firm or an attorney? Or does it have to be a person working in the national office? So can the expert which is appointed by the national office, the question is here, if this can be a private law firm, or does it have to be a person working in the national office? I see. Um, this depends entirely on the national office. The national office will decide who they can uh, appoint as experts. So it depends on each country. Hmm. Good, thanks. And there's a question from Munich, one of the last ones, because we're coming to the end of the webinar. So here the question is, am I right that the German SME needs only to protect the trademark in Germany and it is effective globally? So the question is here, if the, quest, if the trademark is only protected in Germany, it will be effective globally. Yes, yeah, so this is a, this is a, a typical question um, that would be very interesting for the, for the company to raise um, when he is receiving uh, a type of service like an IP scan or a pro bono where you have the possibility to speak uh, 
with a lawyer. Um, I mean, the, the, the purpose of this of this uh, webinar is, of course, not to provide legal advice of the type that is being requested by by the by the viewer. Um, the question is is um, is a legal question, no? Um, and well, in this case, it's in Germany. The most important thing would be to ask a German um, expert, a lawyer. Uh, or ask the IP office, perhaps in, they will be able to answer it to your question. Um, in Germany, there are different types of services available for uh, the small businesses, um, among others, something very similar to an IP scan, a type of IP scan. And of course, there are also uh, German lawyers who might be able to answer those questions directly. Okay, super. Thank you, Maria. Um, we have to come to an end now. We have already our 45 minutes over. Um, I would like to thank you all, the audience, everywhere there uh, around. You have been super active with a lot of questions and you have followed this webinar today, which was our pleasure. We hope that you have now a clearer idea about how to find the right IP strategy for your business how to take advantage from the 20 million fund to get a re reimbursement of 75% of your IP scan expenses. And we were very happy, of course, to share these information with you. It was a pleasure also to reply to all of your questions. So thank you very much, Maria and Hans, for your very clear explanations and examples. And also a big um, thanks to the Academy organizing this event. And to the technicians, we had today quite a lot of challenges to make this happen. Thank you very much. And see you hopefully again on the next webinar for SMEs on the 6th of April, same time, 10 o'clock. Don't miss it and you will discover how artificial intelligence and IP can be of help for your business. Thank you. And stay safe. <laughs>